SW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious grapple vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines pay per view by pay per view. It's your boy, the pumpkin king of Halloween Town, Jay Skellington. <laughs> Joined as ever with my burlap antagonist, Oogie Boogie. <laughs> v1? Alright. And from the Book of Who, our very own Grinch, Mr. OSC. Alright. Not be the Book of Whom. It's an OSW Christmas special, a Dungeon of Doom extravaganza! It's Halloween Havoc 95, and it's coming up right now. Welcome, eggnoggers! <laughs> Who be to- I've got so many of these puns. Who <laughs> <laughs> be days are here again? <laughs> Mince pies. Oh, oh yes! When are you nice. releasing this episode? Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> this year. <laughs> Great to have you back, Ozzy. Thank you. Tremendous love for our happening review. Got some feedback on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pete Harper proposes wind. If I remember correctly, wind is generated from hot air colliding with cold air, and the difference in pressure makes the air move. Therefore, with regard to the wall of wind, perhaps the plants are suddenly and rapidly heating themselves up in the direction of Sparky Mark and friends and making wind. V1 would go all, all the way with that one. No, I, I don't believe in We're not getting into this. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a great point and thank you for for adding. I have a feeling that this conversation is going to periodically come back into <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> Neo Roman One postulates, would you guys say that the black clouds at the end of the film are a sign of monsoon? 
Oh, nice. Nice. Did you get it? Did you get it? <laughs> you get it? Yes. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert Hudson decrees, that was fucking awesome. I agree with Mr. OOC on absolutely everything. Why, you ask? Because he's always right. Prove me wrong. Ooh, we're not allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> to do this special, our Tattoo Ultra Bras have allowed us to put off their reviews for a little while, and we'll be starting a new old school pay-per-view story arc in the new year. But for right now... Solomon, my son! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you up to speed. When Hulk Hogan arrived in WCW in June 94, he had a huge Hulkamark in Dave Sullivan. His kayfabe brother, Kevin Sullivan, he doesn't like that. Not one bit. A masked man, Nancy Kerrigan's Hulkster's ankle, and the assailant was revealed to be the Butcher! Brutus Beefcake, thanks to Sullivan's influence. Joined by ex-WWF talent Earthquake, rechristened Avalanche, the three faces of fear were formed and set out to destroy Hulkamania. They jobbed, jobbed, and jobbed, and when Sullivan turned on Beefer, they disbanded. This led to Beefer's 13th gimmick name, the amnesiac known as the man with no name. After Slambury 95, the master told Sullivan he was to create the Dungeon of Doom, destroy Hulkamania, take his WCW title, and that brings us to Halloween Havoc 95. Jay, that was a powerful intro. Just, just to get your point about the man with no name, his parents would still know his name. <laughs> <laughs> despite him not remembering, right? <laughs> and could he not just go up to the office and be like, sorry, I signed a contract and I had my memory, right? Uh, what name is on them there? The news folks. Motown's gone mad. Halloween Havoc is here. Two demons have emerged. The giant. He has a Jones for destruction. His motorcycle smashing. Back cracking. Bone crunching. Neck choking rampage has opened the ghastly gate for the man who would not, could not stay down. WCW World Champion Hulk Hogan has crossed over to the dark side to take on the evil powers in their own eerie world. Shudder to think about their monster trucks locked up in a sumo-style showdown. If survival is possible, they will then be hauntingly close when they see each other eye to eye inside the fortress called the Ring. It will happen before your very eyes here at Halloween Havoc 95. is centered right now in Detroit and the Joe Louis Arena as well as on top of Cobo Hall. Kick off incredible campy movie guy voice over intro package name dropping Darkside Hogan, Giant, Dungeon of Doom, Subo Monster Trucks. <laughs> <laughs> what a result. Oh my it's god. Magic. 10 seconds into this show, I was like, oh my fucking god! I think I actually texted you that exact, I was like, I am literally seconds into this show, and I fucking love it. Awesome. At the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit, Michigan, there's nowhere to hide. It's Halloween Havoc, October 29th, 1995. Attendance tonight is 13,000, less than half paid. The first ever sellout with over 5,000 empty seats. Wow. Punters ponied up an average ticket price of... $30. $10.62. Oh, shit. Which, to give you an idea how the new generation era was doing, that's their second highest gate of 95 uh, behind Super Brawl. Times are hard. Commentators tonight are Tony Chavani and Bobby Heenan. Let's do it to it. Crap. 
contest for the US title. Champion DDP with Diamond Doll, Kimberly versus Johnny B. Bad. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. That was excellent. Thank you. Johnny B. Bad is Mark Merrow. I'm calling him Mark Merrow. Backstage, Mark Merrow explains he's got car troubles. A flat tire. He's comically dirty faced, so he must have like taken the lugs <laughs> off with his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he says he doesn't have a phone. Which I laughed, it's very ghetto, but... No, it's 1995. It's 95, yeah. it's like Zach fucking Morris job, <laughs> like, you know. DDP and his roidy crony enter stage right. Max Muscle. Mr. Backney spills the beans, chortling at four flat tyres. But Mero said, a flat tyre. Detective Mero puts two and two together. <laughs> it's four. <laughs> and clocks Page with a theatrical punch. And now we've got this match. Uh, what do they have to gain from Johnny B. Bad not being able to drive there? He missed his opportunity to... Take on uh, Sting? Yeah, for his US title. So? Yeah, DDP wouldn't be able to face him because like, he's got the yeah. TV title. So, mm. yeah. Oh, he doesn't appreciate it. Uh, Diamond Doll was starting to get googly eyes towards Meryl. Yeah, well, who wouldn't? DDP's got the Bad Blaster, which is the... Plunger that shoots out kisses and Meryl's shit punk rock theme hits and a macho looking guy backs out. <gasps> it's a trap! The real Meryl jumps the barricade and gets the slip on DDP. Ew. It's not very face-like though, is it? To fool someone and then attack them from behind. Mm. It's kind of cunty. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that spot brought to you thanks to Jumping Joey Mags. Yep. Worth noting, DDP didn't start wrestling until he was 35. He was 39 at this point. Paige and the Diamond Doll have a side plot of dissension. (laughs) Kimberly doesn't appreciate DDP's heel antics since winning the lottery. $13.6 million. Two things. One, you get that kind of money, you're not taking bumps for a living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And two, fucking stadia, scruffy-haired hobo, and... That spandex monstrosity. Bollocks, you're a millionaire. Steve! (laughs) This neon 90s affair is a peachy orange and black, complete with a yellow target on his arse that guys can blam on. (laughs) (laughs) What bar is DDP? Uh, Well, DDP, he's a line bar. Nice one. Mm. All right, so we're doing a Christmas special, Ooh. but I didn't want to tell the fans that, hey, we're doing a Christmas special. So I sneakily asked the fans, what bar is DDP? And here's the answers. Number one, yes, a lion bar. Give that man a can mm. of Coke. A Yorkie peanut wow, bar. Look at that. Not bad. Mortal Kombat 2. Oh, 10th birthday. Yes, get in. A top set bar. Never heard? Hmm. A what the fuck is this? Jalapeno smoked snack stick made with beef and chicken. That's sounds really disgusting. Nice. <laughs> it yeah. sounds nice. A fusion meat torrents hot and spicy noodles. Nice! Mm-hmm. Take it back to the classics. <laughs> a tango bar. Oh. A bar. Dandelion and burdock can. Nice. Ooh. And finally, a can of Shito spiced pepper sauce. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent work, guys. That's fucking great. DDP gets the heat starting with reversing a turnbuckle spot into snake eyes. 
Kimberly's gimmick is that she has large scorecards and would rate DDP's moves, like the belly to back suplex, which gets a 10. But dissension, you see. She blows off when he asks for a scorecard, and later, for a top rope double axe handle from Mero, she gives him a 10. A top rope double axe handle yeah. that gets a 10? Are you having a laugh? Oh, come on. Shit move name number one. DDP hits the pancake, which is a very safe front-facing tombstone. Uh, what do you think of Heenan on commentary? Really good up to a point, but we'll get to that later. Not the Heenan that I know. It's com- it's completely different. Not so hot to me. Yeah, I, I felt he was quite hit and miss. Mm. It sounds like he was phoning it in, but he's incredibly talented, so some of it's funny and some of it just falls on his face. Yeah. He says, There's no excuse, Tony, for having money. No excuse for having money. Let me write that one down. Giovanni's such a cunt on commentary. He's like exactly what you don't want there. You know, like he should be playing off other people and the gimmicks and, you know. He's, he's got a great voice. I think he sounds kind of disingenuous. Yeah. Like it feels like this is definitely mm. a job. He doesn't enjoy mm-hmm. watching it. But he turns around with uh, Heenan says. She's not liking these tactics at all. As a matter of fact, she's getting angry right now. Oh, she's going to pop. What, you going to hold her breath? Tear up a charge card? It's like, hmm, that was good. The lads don't work well together. Awkward hip toss turned pin. Theatrical clown bump from a rolling nothing. Shivante calls it, that quickness again. <laughs> it's not botched, but it's not smooth. I mean, then we get four endless Randy Orton headlocks. DDP looks to reverse the turnbuckle spot like he did earlier, but gets a messy hurricane runner over the top rope. It's shit move name number two. It's the bad day. <laughs> Mero tries a Rey Mysterio 619 fake it. A fucking state of it. Like he just got- Oh, it was awful. Jesus, yeah. And a somersault plancha to the outside. It's shit move name number three. It's the bad mood. <laughs> then a... Splash back into the ring. Ah, oh, it's the bad writing. <laughs> <laughs> Max Muscle grabs Mero at DQ, but gets hit and goes straight back to position one at ringside, and he doesn't sell. Uh, Max Muscle looks quite like former world's strongest man, Ted RCD. <laughs> I'm still sorry about calling him the world's most average man. <laughs> the bad man dodges home alone heel buffoonery. <laughs> Tapping Max on the head. Man, we get a Corporal Kirshner level doing <laughs> uh, school of selling. Holy shit. <laughs> DDP's out from Max's weak clothesline, for fuck's sake. Johnny B. Bad pins Paige 4 to 3 and wins the title belt in 17 fucking minutes. <laughs> no chemistry, endless headlocks. Highlight was the low light of the terrible, horrible move names. Bad yeah. days. Pardon the pun. <laughs> um, I thought the start was very slow and the middle bit with the headlocks was unbearable. But I thought that it actually built up to be a decent match and they got the fans by the end. I thought that bad was actually a good baby face, despite that making no sense to say. <laughs> it's like a decent enough opener. It was fine. If it was half the length, I think it would have been decent. But it was too long. Post-match, Mero cuts a bland, grateful babyface promo. I thought he actually sounds like Bo Dallas. And today, I'm here to tell you, and all those fans, dreams do come true. This is reality! The world television title. Before remembering his Little Richard gimmick and gets fired up. He leaves before Mean Gene can name drop the Pegasus restaurant in Chicago, so he's awkwardly reeled back in. Bad would have a successful rematch with Paige next month at World War III and would get Kimberly as his valet. What of the millions of dollars, though? <laughs> it turns out that the money was Kimberly's that she won from a bingo game. And DDP... $13 million at a bingo game. Fuck bingo, lads. bango, bongo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and DDP used it to go for Namero's title. He lost his claim to the booty man. Ed Leslie gimmick name number 16. <laughs> Speaking of... 
the man from the Zodiac. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. You give me the one that has betrayed darkness, that has betrayed light. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. No. No. Just yes. No. <laughs> Oh my fucking god! <laughs> yes! <laughs> no. No. Yes! Yes. <laughs> oh my god! What? Well, what we can't do this shtick. Uh, Zodiac's gimmick is that he shows yes, yes no. and no, yes, no, yes, really? no. Really? Yeah. Did he do that at all? Yeah, a couple of times. No, he was. <laughs> <laughs> From the land of yin and yang, it's the Zodiac! <laughs> My goodness. Number 15, terrible Ed Leslie gimmick name. Uh, we should, like, periods in time just divide it up into Ed Leslie gimmick name. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Zodiac era, and this is the... Oh, I love it. It's the era of booty. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Sierra WrestleMania 9 episode for details on Ed Leslie's gimmick names. Steve, please describe what you see when you look at the Zodiac. I don't understand. I, he's got his face painted black and white. He can only say yes and no. Does he have his memory as his character? But he's not Ed Leslie. He's Zodiac. He's a different person. But so does he know him. he's Ed Leslie? Does he know he's Ed Leslie? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> the mullet is a tip-off. <laughs> Zodiac is wearing a sliced white and black tasseled affair. What bar is he? There is only one bar that he can be. And that, my friend, is a blackjack bar. Right there. Number one pick. But let us take it to the fans. <clears throat> Let's do this shit. Have you done blackjack, Steve? Yeah. yeah but I haven't done a blackjack bar. Ah, get out. If I'm able to do Mars Bar, Mars Planets, Mars Delight in the space of three shows, I can do a blackjack bar. Oh no, I invented this gimmick. <laughs> I can do whatever I want with it. He is a licorice all sorts. Mm. He a is a little Bertie Bassett. <laughs> Very good. A Hershey's Cookies and Cream Bar. Nice, lovely. Kettle chips. An optimist bar. Ooh, Ooh. yeah. A gift mm. to British children. I think they may be specially made bars. This looks like you couldn't buy it in a shop. Mm. Right, okay. But a, like a company would give them out, you know? An amazing limited edition Coca-Cola light bottle. Wow, Ooh. look at this. It's like uh, an Ed Leslie Zebra bottle. <laughs> <laughs> He is, of course, a can of Carly. Mm. Nice. Mm. And at last, he is a barcode. <laughs> <laughs> a winner is that fella. Zodiac is part of the Dungeon of Doom with a gelled mohawk mullet and making an L with his arms, who can only communicate by Daniel Bryan chants. Yes and no. The poster boy for everything wrong or everything right with WCW. He comes out to what would be Rey Mysterio's theme, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. Captain Planet. Maybe if he turned heel, I guess. Huh? Like in the happening. Uh. He's facing Macho Man Randy Savage. State of your whammy guitar cover, mate. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? It's so WCW, isn't it? Just to take something and just cheapen it, basically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no idea who the bird was near the entranceway. It's the Zodiac versus Macho Man Randy Savage. Who is not injured, obviously. Observe this, brother. <laughs> this is a rag sheet, brother. Amazing. You thought Macho's elbow was injured, brother. Would an injured man do this with his elbow? <laughs> and hurt himself more. <laughs> Get up! And do even more damage! Uh, only thing of note, a female fan runs in the ring and successfully escapes the ref's clutches as the lads smartly bail outside. 
Actually, no, we get an incredible kayfabe killing ring post cell by Beefer. It's the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corporal Lord. Kirshner cell. Lads bail back into the ring, and the fan gets a massive pop while taken away by Detroit's finest. And Heenan tries to cover up, saying the crowd cheer for Macho. When they were taking her away, it was still on the hard camera. You know, she passed mm. by the apron. I was like, for fuck's sake. So Macho bustling. Man was an absolute hero here because the fan got in the ring right next to him and he just looks and he's like, he doesn't give a shit. Well done, Macho. You fucking kept your cool. It was excellently done. They left it to the ref, and but the ref couldn't contain her. So Yeah. yeah. Wasn't there when a fan ran in during the NWO at some point? And then it was a macho or razor or something. It was, it was razor, yeah. yeah. He just kicked him in the head, like, oh, on his way out. <laughs> God. <laughs> Why are you getting a boo from him, like? Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you deserve it. Mm. Don't stupid. worry, folks. I'm sure she'll get all the help she needs. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, shit. That's it. Top rope elbow drop. Embarrassing squash in a match both want to forget ever happened. Beefers steamrolled in 1 minute 30. Pay me. Zodiac was the stand-in for Kamala, who'd already left WCW. Kamala! <laughs> Thank you, my mama! Thank you! The Ugandan giant wasn't earning much as he was on a per-appearance contract, and also he didn't want the job to Randy Savage, despite this pay-per-view being his biggest payday in a while. So he left sporadically appearing in WCW to sporadically appearing on the indies. I don't get that way of thinking with, with wrestlers. You know, like, uh, I'm way past my prime. I'm not currently working. I need money, but <laughs> not jobbing to the second greatest star of this generation. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me. <laughs> Kamala, unorthodox, unpredictable, and... Couple him with Kevin Sullivan, who we know is a nut. And then, well, you've got a dangerous combination there. Uh, uh, and, uh, hi. Uh. Match number three is Road Warrior Hawk versus Kurosawa with Colonel Robert Parker. Kurosawa! Here is Manabu Nakanishi, who still wrestles for New Japan. And Hawk is by himself, as Animal is out with a back injury. He himself is rehabbing from a legitimate arm injury and took some time off after Kurosawa kayfabe broke his arm at Clash of the Champions 31. Ma- <laughs> oh, yeah, his arm looked grand there to me. Would it fucking kill you to wear an elbow pad? Yeah. To sell this injury, I mean, like, yeah? didn't uh, Brock do that to Sean and Sean sold it really well? Yep. Like, all you have to do is literally fucking cramp up your arm ah oh, it's broken and Hawk's like ah oh, shit my arm oh no look at this range of movement <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking awful Nakanishi's here with Southern Dandy Colonel Parker best known as Tennessee Lee in WWF for calling Jeff Jarrett the world's greatest lover let me introduce these folks to a genuine star oh that's right folks he's the world because he'd know of. <laughs> First hand experience. Big concern was would Hawk sell? Probably not. Kick off with a fuck's sake can't get into position neck breaker. Straight to the finish. Hawk hits a few moves, trip up by Parker. The southern fop anachronistically wipes his brow with his napkin. Hawk hits his head off the post. Kurosawa gets in a few slams and suplexes and Parker holds down Hawk's foot while he's pinned which wouldn't aid leverage at all. And the heel foreigner gets the three and the win. Hawk, boop, jumps <laughs> <laughs> No selling those moves and celebrates in the ring as the heel winner fucks off. Cheers. I don't really want to even call this a match. It's like there was no actual match here. There was no back and forth. There was no storyline. It was just fucking Hawk, no selling then losing, and then no selling some more. So no one gets over, no one does anything. I don't care, fuck off. Yep. That's what happens, you lose. 
Afterwards, the best spot, Kurosawa shouts his own name. Kurosawa Ichiban! <laughs> Banzai! Of course, because you're Japanese. <laughs> As Kunt Hawk stays in the ring and celebrates anyway. So Kurosawa, this is probably the highlight of his WCW run. That or losing to Macho on Nitro once. I'd uh, rather lose to Macho than beat this clown, yeah. He'd be back in New Japan the following year. The Road Warriors would reunite when Animal returned from injury in January 96, but they couldn't topple Sting and Luger for the belts and were completely shit out of luck when the NWO hit the scene. So they tried their luck, no selling in the WWF instead. And then yeah. the Outlaws beat them up, and that, that was about it, really. That's right, yeah. They just could never let go of their peak period, could they? They were like, yeah, we were once the top tag team in wrestling. You've got to always have us as a top team. Hey, Hawk and Animal, do you want to face RVD and Kane? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Take fucking both finishers, didn't they? Five-star chokeslam. <laughs> Straight back up. <laughs> well, got, to, <laughs> got to his feet before RVD. It was <laughs> what amazing. <is> <laughs> Back to Gene. If Package wins his match later, he'll wrestle Macho because of reasons. <laughs> Gene then interviews Savage. Oh, it's great to see Macho again. It feels very loose, unscripted. They talk over each other and they feed off each other. So it's very natural and organic. Mean Gene is the best interviewer this business has ever had. He's so great. Just little things like... He'll act like someone said things that they shouldn't have. And he'll be like, oh, my word, you can't be saying that. And, oh, I'm going to go back to the truck. And he's just, you know, the way nowadays I face you. And what do you think of your match at the TLC? And then I look at you while you give your scripted answer that I already know back to me. I was like, this guy is so fucking amazing. Randy Savage, I know you your are... Your mustache is crooked. Your beard is a little sideways, too, but I don't want to get into that. That's I'm not right. going to take personal pot shots at you or anybody else. That's not my nature. Get in line, everybody. I'm a little better guy me. than that. I don't mind telling you. Cool, I'm man. a bigger man. Your mustache is crooked. <laughs> Your beard's a little out of line. <laughs> it wasn't. His mustache was no, fine. No, it was, I, it was I checked, yep. What is a video scope? A video scope is the equipment you use to record in glorious grapple vision. Okay. He means camera. Awesome. Okay, great. Because the lens, if you know what I mean. Okay, okay. Both Luger and Macho and the promos talked about Hogan. And that's something I fucking love about, particularly WCW. They will talk about their own feud and then stuff outside of their feud. Yeah. Because, like, wrestling these days, like, AJ Lee will only talk about the Divas division and whoever she's feuding with at the moment. It's very narrow tunnel vision. Like, she'll never talk about Brock or yeah. Cena or something, you know? Yeah. Great. It feels real. Uh, <clears throat> mean Gene mentions that Jimmy Hart is um, in talks with somebody previously managed. Do you know who that was? Well, give me uh, 199 a minute now. Fuck, 149 a minute. And can you imagine if you rang that thing? Hello. <laughs> In the game between reached. Miami and Sin, Cincinnati. Sin, Cincinnati. Addy, Cincinnati. <laughs> awesome. Well, there's tons of ex WWE yeah, stars. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, could have been Nightheart. Oh my god. Someone posted this thing about Jim Neidhart and it's uh, him taking on Virgil in some reject shitty territory and he comes out in a fucking Ku Klux Klan outfit. Wow. You know, he gets a slip on Virgil and one of his mates comes out with the hood and they beat him up and I'd never... Holy shit. Literally the worst thing I've ever seen in wrestling. Like, you'd imagine this storyline would be beneath a wrestler, you know? He's still wearing the pink yeah, and black. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely the 90s, lads. Yeah, yeah. That, okay, that makes this way worse. Mm. Who's the other lad? Looks like Bart Gunn. 1995. <sighs> Holy shit. Mm. It's the same year as this. It is, it is. Fuck, yeah. Holy fucking shit, yeah. look at that. That's worse than anything Russo's done, like. He's never put that on stage, mm. like, you know. I don't know. Abyss... 
winning the world title from Sting by a DQ. That's pretty bad. <laughs> DQ title change, the clan. <laughs> Father, now that you've given me the power, I know what you meant when you said we will crush the immortal Hulk Hogan and all the Hulkamaniacs because it is etching stone! <laughs> Next up is Mr. JL versus Sabu. It's Jerry Lynn. <laughs> it's Jerry Lynn. Oh my God! Are you serious? How do I? Well, how do I what, why? What, what would lead me to believe it was Jerry Lynn? Mr. JL. <laughs> <laughs> but then who is Jerry Flynn? Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a wrestler called Jerry Flynn. Is there? Yeah, it was Jerry like, Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it! <laughs> oh my god, I just have the fucking state of Jerry Lynn. <laughs> JL jogs to the ring like the jobber he is. He's facing Sabu, managed by his uncle, the original Sheik. He's hailing from Bombay, India, which is correct, it wasn't renamed Mumbai until the following year. Holy what bar, Steve. <laughs> uh, Mr. JL. He's wearing a purple, pink, silver, and yellow getup. He's a box of Quality Street. Have I, I used that? I love it. Excellent. You've used uh, one of the sweets in Quality Street. Yeah. <laughs> but not, yes. not, not, not the container itself. You could also be a can of Vimto. Mm. Mm. Or if you're English, it's pronounced Wimto. <laughs> Wimto. So Sabu's first WCW pay-per-view is fittingly against future ECW alum Jerry Lynn. Springboard moonsault to the outside and Sabu clatters Uncle Shiki in the neck. Fucking cheers. <laughs> <laughs> also, every match so far on this card has opened up with a brawl to the outside. Johnny B. Bad did. Macho Man definitely did. This did. Hawk and uh, Kurosawa also went out a couple of times. So, fuck you, d -Lo. Steve, what's the term we use? Damn it, Dino. <laughs> but, you know, I was angry because it was every match. <laughs> In the horrific, lots of flips and no selling them for minimum crowd reaction. Somersault leg drop lands Sabu's arse on JL's face. Flip number 72 gets the three count and Sabu picks up the win in 325 as La Parker's 90s slap bass rock theme plays us out. And we see that the original Sheik has an Alibaba sword. <laughs> Just cosly. Poor El Sheik, he looked in raw fucking shape. He could barely move. It was kind of sad. Also, he's not really Sheik. -y. He's just the Sheik, right? This is Ed <laughs> Farhat, right? <laughs> yeah, it's Iron Sheik. He's Sheik, baby. <laughs> if it's wrong, I'm going you know, change it. Oh, you know some cunt will mm -hmm. SummerSlam 92. <laughs> No, Survivor Series <laughs> needs to. Oh, you can't even. <laughs> also, what's JL's gimmick? Like, what does he do other than wear a mask and do moves? I think he's like the WCW Max Moon. <laughs> is, is he meant to be Japanese or is he meant to be an American? Mexican. Well, Americans don't wear masks. It's true. Post-match, Sheik legitimately goes into business for himself by throwing fire into JL's eyes. That wasn't a planned spot. <laughs> <laughs> After his boy has won. Fucking carny, I love it. Wrestling. How do you do that? Is it paper? A flash isn't it? paper, yeah. yeah. And a lighter. There's, yeah. Like, there's so many indie spots where someone takes yeah. a lighter out of their jocks and they're like, oh shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh shit. Yeah, Hogan Warrior. Yeah. Having the Hogan Warrior? Yeah, yeah, it's oh uh, Halloween Havoc 97. Oh, I, I, was, I, I was just going to say, clearly not in the Fed, because they wouldn't fuck that yeah. up. 
I think it was Halloween Havoc '98. Yeah. Yeah. It was the, the you know worst match of the year. Yeah. Kind of. I want to do that yeah. at some point. <laughs> That's the feud with the mirror and all. Yeah. Oh, oh it is, my yeah. god! Yeah. <laughs> this company. <laughs> Oh. So, like, no kayfabe benefit to this. No. You know? This would be Sapu's first and last WCW pay-per-view. Are you serious? Yeah, he was working without a contract and did some sneaky ECW dates on the side. Combine that with attitude problems. He was shit-canned post-taste. Then we get a fair bit of downtime. Trope of early 90s wrestling. We take a break from in-ring for a bit. Next, we get a... <laughs> Solomon, my son! The master, King Ikea. We had this exact same problem last time, wasn't yeah, it? That Curtis. was Prince. Well, this, no, 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 no. this no, is Prince like... Prince Ikea. Ikea. Ikea, right, yeah. yeah. King Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> Spouts the moon and the sun and some else shite. I don't know what facial expression Taskmaster's gone for. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> he, it was like he was trying as hard as to not look at him because he would piss himself laughing. And he's like, <laughs> By the bones of Amankara and the many moons of Jupiter. <laughs> Put a fucking bib on, mate. <laughs> it's just like a fucking spit just flying out. So like he's talking about planets and moons and magic and stuff and then out of nowhere he goes The Dungeon of Doom's monster truck is far superior to <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Beautiful moment in wrestling history. Oh my god. We get the first of many reflection time with the commentators, where they take a breather, turn away from the desk, and convey storyline for later in the pay-per-view. That was quite a nice transition, uh, something you see in sports, but not in WWE. Hang on, Shavante mentions, the Yate has broken out of the ice in the Himalayas. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> so we left you this past Monday on WCW Monday Nitro Live, we saw the Yeti that they brought from the Himalayas break out of the, the ice. And apparently the Yeti is here as well. The insurance policy they talked about. And then he buries the Yeti by calling him yet another giant from the Dungeon of Doom. Isn't his gimmick is that he's the giantest the giant? He makes the giant look small? Then why is the giant getting a world title match oh then? Oh my know? goodness. Sorry, just that was awful. Absolutely horrific, but I enjoyed that so much. That's full circle. Segment Just the needle ever. going so far below yeah. zero, it's back to it. It's end. back to awesome. Like yeah, absolutely. Backstage, Hulk Hogan gives away a motorcycle to Colon Alabama's own maniac, Mike Hill. Tall dude. Hogan's gimmick in the WWF was beach puns, dog paddling past the buoys, and all that bollocks. <laughs> And in WCW, it's all about vehicles, motorbikes, monster trucks. Yeah. Harley Davidson, brother. What? What is this fucking thing? <laughs> <laughs> Painful and awkward. Oh my goodness, that poor daughter who was put on fucking telly. Was that a daughter? Or was it was a wife? wife, man? Fuck off. <laughs> this is the deep south, man. <laughs> Wow, yeah. this was awkward and mortifying. Yeah. Gene throws us back to ringside as he angrily says, Pay-per-view spectacular! <laughs> I'm so happy we it a few times. <laughs> right now, let's bring you up to date on our next pay-per-view spectacular! Because <laughs> Hogan kind of puts his bicep in front of him and he's like, well, take you back to ringside for this pay-per-view spectacular! <laughs> <laughs> And then we get an ad pimping World War 3. Oh, dear God. Trying to insult Hogan, Heenan has 12% of a joke. You know that, that motorcycle will look very nice in that trailer court where he lives and parked right next to those other cars up there on the rocks and cement blocks and right next to that little... One of those round um, you can swimming pools, like. you know, those yeah. nice four-hour swimming pools. Yeah, that's, that, that bike will look real nice there. Hogan, you better touch your own seat 
And you better super glue it to a chair, because the last thing you want is to get up on the roof. It's going to happen, Hogan, real, real soon. Let's go to Dave oh, I'd Pender. Like to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it, you know. <laughs> Which reinforces my point that he'll like give his best right now, but I'm not doing an ounce of work before or afterwards. Mm. Just like Jerry Lauder. Minus giving your best. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, it's time for the... Adbreak Questionarium. That's better, eh? <laughs> Kevin Sullivan, you have the momentum of a runaway freight train. <laughs> Why are you so popular? Well, <laughs> often ask, would I like to snap best? Arms? Legs? Oh, oh, I like a beefy spicy Slim Jim! Step into it, yeah! Wow! This WCW magazine is really cool! In the March issue, you'll see exclusive photos of Starcade 95, including the battle between Sting, Luger, and Flair. And is this a love triangle or something more? Going to be a war! Find out! Plus, exclusive coverage of the 95 year in review. Man! Where do they get this stuff? Get your copy now on newsstands everywhere. Mr. Burns, your campaign seems to have the momentum of a runaway freight train. Why are you so popular? Ooh, a tough question, but a fair one. Has, does, no one gets that phrase, no? Not one person ever. <sighs> Philistine! I know. What would the answer be? He's not. <laughs> <laughs> So the question for the ad break questionnaire is, Mr. Sullivan, you have the momentum of a runaway freight train. Why are you so popular? The answer is... He's not. Match number five, it's Lex Luger <laughs> versus Mang. Fucking, what was with Lex Luger's team? Uh, actually, I have this for Lex Luger. Generic Biddle music. What's Biddle? Biddle music. <laughs> Fucking terrible. Yeah. Well, flutes play from the island of Tonga. It's Meng. Oh, he's already dropped the predator mask. He does have a mask, mm. but state of your mask. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of the Halloween clip art they're using for the nameplates. Oh, poor Luger. He was set to be WWF's top babyface and win the world title at WrestleMania 10, but the Lex Express crashed and was towed back to WCW <laughs> the following year. Does he still have the Lex Express? It's probably the same bus that's like the DX Express and stuff, no. I'm sure, yeah. you know. They only had to change like one letter, two letters. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Shivante bangs on about someone being shark shocked. <laughs> what? Whatever it is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dissension. Meng cost a shark the match, leading to speculation that Luger is in cahoots with the Dungeon of Doom. I like that. I charitably describe this match as a boring crawl. <laughs> Kick off with a fuck's sake catapult. Cut to Sullivan looking bored and coughing. He's like... <laughs> Throughout the match, we check on the Taskmaster and see that Heel Sullivan won't attack Babyface Luger. And that's the crux of this storyline. Has he struck an accord with Lex? Has OOC's boy joined the Dungeon of Doom? Also, D'Lo strikes again, man. It was not long before these fuckers went to the outside again. We get a terrible chop by Meng, but 
Lex sells a shoulder breaker very well. Felt very painful. Like he does a shoulder breaker, he's like, ah, oh, you know, oh, good job, Lex. Yes. I actually have a note here that I thought Lex's selling is the best that we've watched ever. In OSW In review. OSW. Yeah. Of anyone, like? No, 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 of Lex. Oh, okay. If he's better than he was a while ago, then that's positive, you know? Yeah. Uh, he hits a catapult on Ming, uh, who, who doesn't help him, and he just powers the shit out of it. Quite impressive, Lex. Ming spits a lot. <laughs> Fucking knacker, hate that. <laughs> he has a braided mullet, and his jocks have a hand fingering, well, uh, <laughs> a lady's rude parts, basically. <laughs> He has Umaga's Simone Spike finisher with the added gimmick of a golden claw he puts on first. Finger bang. <laughs> Luger has very light offense. Like, maybe he's very careful not to piss off Meng. Mm. His kicks and clotheslines barely touch him. Meng hits a pile driver and Luger just barely goes up for it. His legs are all at a fucking angle. I'm like, Jesus Christ, Lex. Straighten your fucking legs, like... <clears throat> Lex runs wild and knocks the big man down. After a poor slam, the Tonga kid gets his golden thimble from his boot. Kid Tonga. <laughs> it's a ref's fault for not checking. And in clear view of the ref, who is in place, not being distracted, just fucking doesn't acknowledge Meng using the foreign object and starts counting the pin. Fuck it. It's Sullivan's time to act. He runs in, giving Luger a light tap. Oh. So Lex wins by DQ in 13-14. Imagine, you know, like, the ref just, like, you know, one, two, kick, and he looks and goes, I'm going to DQ him for that. Give him a proper fucking kick, Kevin. God's sake. <laughs> but it plays into the story. There it is. So you gave Luger the win. You, maybe you are in cahoots with the Dungeon of Doom, uh, which is why he wouldn't smash him in the face and kick him. Yeah. Bruce Buffer announces, due to outside during disqualification, the total package Lex Luger. What? What? Yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and the cosmic ballet goes, goes on. on. Uh, so Lex will face Savage later on tonight. What do you think? I thought the match started off well. Luger looked decent. But at the end, Ming being old, slow and out of shape made the match pretty much fall off a cliff. And I didn't enjoy the ending. Uh, it just looked terrible. It was it was perfectly adequate. And that's it. That's <laughs> all I got. Sparky Plug Big Show puts over the sumo truck match and can't wait for Hogan to put the heavyweight championship on the belt. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Who's writing these promos? <laughs> How young did Big yeah. Show look? Yeah. Oh my god, he looks he looks great. Looks he, great. He's yeah. so fucking slim. Yeah, he looks awesome. WCW Heavyweight Championship on the belt. Hogan, you're mine, and don't forget it, you understand me? Alright, ladies ah. and gentlemen, the giant is gonna be meeting Hulk Hogan two times yet tonight here at Halloween Havoc. Machine versus machine, man versus man, Hogan and the Giant. Live from the Motor City, let's get you back to the ring. Match number six, it's the Enforcer, Aaron Anderson, and Flying Brian Pillman versus Sting with no partner, no Ric Flair. What happened? Shivante tells us that Iron and Pillman attacked Flair before the pay-per-view started. There's no footage, no Nitro stills. The backstory is that Flair offered to tag with Sting, who's feuding with Iron and Pillman. Sting reluctantly trusts Flair, saying, If you double-cross me, I'll leave you for dead. And Flair retorts with, Don't worry, I won't. <laughs> the single babyface out-wrestles the heels at the start, making a fine job of being outnumbered two on one. Oddly, the ref moves out of the way of a press slam to Pillman by walking over Brett's rope. I thought it was needlessly theatrical. I have to mention one thing. The Four Horsemen song. Beautiful. 80s Satriani-esque magic. Can you give us a rendition of it? 
It's like ding 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 ding. You know, no, no. Ding 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 ding. The it was William like Tell over here. Galloping, yeah, that kind of no. There was a bit of the clippity clop at the start. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Arn takes control after sacrificing Pillman's head into Sting's head. And Flair, who refused to change into Ringer, who sits to ringside and attacks Arn. But the rules! The ref demands Flair wait outside until he's tagged in. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Man, I love the little tag psychology accoutrements you see here. Like, Arn relieves pressure of the full Nelson by sitting on the ropes. He's fucking great. Such a good wrestler. I wish he was in the Fed for, for longer and I got to see him more. Yeah, tremendously smooth, polished wrestler with an Austin-like serious character. It's like him versus fucking Brett or something, but oh my god. It's like fucking Metal Gear Solid 3, I'm spooging here just <laughs> thinking about it. There's another bit where Pillman dropped Toe Hole's sting and holds onto it while tagging Aaron, and soon they keep control. Mm. Really, really good stuff. They work sting over in the heel corner, then we get an abdominal stretch. Aaron uses Brian for leverage. And then holds the ropes until Brian gets in and attacks him. So it's great. Oh, Old just... school, makes sense, logical wrestling booking. It's a thing of beauty. I fucking miss it. I miss it so much. Tag psychology. Is yeah. Fantastic. Holy hot dogging Batman. <laughs> Flair is strutting and grandstanding on the apron as the heels get to shine in the ring. Sting's resurgence is cut off by a lovely iron spine buster. He breaks the pin before Flair tries to break it up. That would be actually quite silly, burning your tag like that. Mm. It's actually one of the unspoken tag rules of wrestling. Mm. You're allowed to break up a pin once, and if you do mm-hmm. it a second time, you get DQ'd. Ambrose actually mentioned it on commentary. It's really weird. It's like, oh, that was stupid. Broke up his... He burned his tag there. I was like, oh, oh wow. That's really clever. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Awkward bromance. As Flair shouts for Sting to stand tall. Yeah. (laughs) And Sting calls for Nature Boy. (laughs) Nature, stand tall. Stand tall. Stand tall. He's screaming for Sting to stand tall. Nature Boy. I don't know what's happening. (laughs) What what is this? (laughs) By the moons of Amankara. Our monster took <laughs> After a double noggin knocker, Sting finally tags in Flair. And oh, Nate clock Sting. It was all a lie. Babyface Stinger tries to get at Flair as he's beaten down three on one. He fought like he was actually really pissed off over it. So that was great. Uh, he eventually succumbs to the numbers game. To be fair, I blame Sting. Himself and Flair have been feuding since 1988. (laughs) And Flair has turned on Sting twice. But I swear, brah, I promise. (laughs) He turned on him twice in 1990 and again in 1994. Shame on you, Sting. Mean Gene registers his disgust before segueing into shilling the WCW hotline. Uh, Can you... Uh. 1-900-909-9900 one nine hundred nine oh nine 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 hundred nine ninety yeah, nine hundred. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Mean Gene says it's the worst thing he's ever seen. Oh, come on. What a great life you've had. <laughs> Brilliant. If he says this is the worst thing that he's ever seen, he clearly wasn't paying attention in the segment where he gave away to Harley. Earlier, he said he saw a mouse talking to someone he managed up north. Now, it features Mike Tanay and I don't give a shit, Bowler Tanline Hawk. If you're wondering, Oakland was getting 35% cut from the hotline. Wow. Which was Which was legit doing an almost half million dollars a year, 475000 So Mean Gene was making about $170,000 a year on it, plus his quarter million base pay. As well. Crazy. And so you had Hawk there on the phone, right? That's false advertising. There is no way he's talking to anyone. Yeah. He might be recording a message, but yeah. they're leading you to believe that he's talking to that somebody. That you're going to get in and yeah. get all the yeah. scoops exactly, and all that yeah. shit. Oh, oh, what do you think about this match? I thought it was the best match of the show by a mile. Started off 
really well. Aaron and Sting in particular looked awesome. But I thought that the middle bit when Flair wouldn't tag in got a little bit boring. The ending was kind of cool because I think it's the first time I've ever seen a Taurus Man uh, beatdown ever. Yeah, it's pr- pretty much what I thought. Yeah, me too. These guys are great. I watch them all the time. Fucking love Sting. Love Aaron. Pillman's great. Flair's great. So whatever they do, mm-hmm. it's going to be great. It's a winner, yeah. Now we go to school with Gene. Flair says they're reunited and it feels so good. Horseman style. Incredible charisma from this lad. A great front man for the horseman. Quite solid wrestler, Aaron Highflyer Pillman. Who's number four, though? Paul Roma? The best horseman of them all? Uh, it'd be Benoit. It'd be Blurwa. Oh. Yeah. Heenan says the sport needs Aaron and Flair as friends. Also, sport needs more Mongo. <laughs> There's no Mongo on this show. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> he actually was... In WCW, he was just doing Nitro. He just didn't do this pay-per-view. Oh, really? But yeah, yeah, he was doing Nitro at the time. And it's Tori Wilson, Chihuahua, yeah. Jesus Christ. I thought it was actually quite nice to hear from Heenan, because he actually managed both in the WWF, in the Brain Busters and the Real World's Champion. Ah. Man, he had a much better run of uh, stars than Fuji, like. (laughs) (laughs) He keeps trading down. (laughs) (laughs) Backstage, Tanay asks Luger his thoughts on his match. Lex is perplexed and offers some lovely innuendos. He wants to get it on. He'll be all over, Macho. He'll get what he wants. If they're not innuendos if you don't mean them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for ruining my spot. <laughs> uh, Mike Tanay looked like a corpse in the segment. He seemed to like not wear any makeup and he looked desperate next to Lex. Also, a good Lex Luger promo. One of his better Ooh. ones. Because he didn't fall all over himself and make a tit out of himself <laughs> like he has in the past. What is it? Super Saturday? <laughs> Can you even afford to pay me? <laughs> <laughs> T-shirts are too tight. <laughs> An amazing moment. Booking a match for the total package Lex Luger and Super Brawl. Super Saturday? What is it? I don't even know what it's called. What is it called? S- Super Brawl Saturday. Super Brawl Saturday? Can he afford to pay me to wrestle run? I don't know. I'm one of the biggest legends and stars ever in this. God! Ugh. And your t-shirts are too tight too, Billy! And you book a match with me against Ryan Killings! Look at me! I'm a total package! I will rip him apart! I'm pissed now! I don't think I'd... Bring the giant to me! i fought giants before, and I can't wait to fight your most powerful warrior. Because that's Stim Stone. Only Hulkamania will live forever, Taskmaster. You don't understand! I will destroy Hulkamania! Just now, in the sun! I'm a giant! Yes! It's time to go to the roof of Cobo oh, Hall! It's time to go to the roof if you're to listen to Bobby Heenan. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking rough, 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 rough. It's what dogs do. Yes. <laughs> or it's what sandpaper is. <laughs> <laughs> rough, 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 rough. Uh, someone end up in Detroit River. An impossibility as the building is surrounded by a parking lot. Unless you have <laughs> a catapult, of course. But nice. I don't think they sprung for one, you know. <laughs> They strung for everything fucking else, didn't they? <laughs> Monster trucks, helicopter shots. Oh my Harley god. Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson's. Ah, one being squished, one being given away. This company well on track to going out of business, wasn't it? <laughs> you guaranteed you will not make money on this event. <laughs> what happened? Blank checks, brother. <laughs> Huntington Beach, Jack. Hogan's giving a press conference and is interrupted by the giant who strips and hurls his t-shirt 
at the holster, saying, <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's his dad's shirt he's wearing. <laughs> Remember this, Hogan? <laughs> it's a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> Remember your dad? <laughs> He was also fond of his shirts. <laughs> Is it the shirt that Andre wore in the Princess Bride? The fucking the fat part of stat like with the fumbly bumblies hanging off. Hogan's like, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's his art. <laughs> Hogan's summoned to the Dungeon of Doom's lair where the giant explodes out from a wall and attacks Hogan, dude. Next week, the Taskmaster, dressed as a woman, attacks Hogan. I mean, Jean says, There's a woman! <laughs> <laughs> With a cane! Oh, what is this? There's a woman! With a cane! It needed more like Dr. Schultz, remember? Hulk Hogan, you wanted a woman! <laughs> uh, but didn't uh, Flair also do this gimmick with Hogan? Like, didn't he wrestle a match dress as a woman once? With the fucking petticoat and the, the, the skirt. <laughs> and finally, the giant in a monster truck runs over Hulk's Harley. So we've got, naturally, a joint main event. Hogan and Giant will go bumper to bumper in a monster truck sumo match and then have a world title match. Oh, fucking I don't, oh it's like, my head hurts from that. <laughs> it's, yeah, I think the back of my head is actually a bit sore. <laughs> I think so. Oh, the biggest, most expensive match in history that began because of a fucking frilly shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you take off your shirt. <laughs> this is like, this is my dad's shirt. <laughs> Don't you dare call out one second of your reading of this storyline. It's fucking magic, Jay. <laughs> Sorry, there's a very important point that we skipped over in the preview package to this. They fucking shaved the mustache. Hulk Hogan's mustache was shaved. It's like the most heelish move ever. How dare they? That's like... I don't know, like tearing Superman's cape or something. No, I think he looks fine. No, but like... I think he looks like an old woman. <laughs> it, really? It's yeah. the stupidest thing ever, because if that happened on Nitro, I suppose that should be backing up. <laughs> or at least <laughs> on its way back yeah. anyway. Replacing Ooh. Shivante on commentary for this milestone event is Eric Bischoff and monster truck engineer Bob Chandler. Heenan asks, How much does the truck weigh? <laughs> <laughs> 1,100 pounds or five and a half tons. <laughs> Which is obviously not right. <clears throat> this is what they said on the paper. Okay, well, they're fucking stupid. I'll agree with that, because Bischoff starts asking this clown questions about brake horsepower and fucking braking distance and all. I'm like, it's... Put the match over, Eric! <laughs> Don't care about the truck! Will we spend a hundred grand on it? <laughs> and it is more powerful than Hulk Hogan's truck. It also looks awesome, because Hulk Hogan's truck is fucking shit. Yeah. Got a big fucking arm that looks like an arse on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. Cut to Kobo Hall. Mullet man fumbles over the rules. Bischoff tries to reiterate the rules to no response. We've hidden Pyro on the roof for funsies. <laughs> Push both axles over the line to win. As the guy was explaining the rules, Hogan just looks baffled and his eyes keep on going to like Big Show. Like, are you getting this? <laughs> <laughs> to the ref. Hilarious. They rented a helicopter to film this. <laughs> Why was this on a roof yeah. in general? And what's even funnier, it's, it's not on the roof of where Halloween Havoc is, right? It's on the roof across the road, right? Yeah, it's less than a mile away, yeah. It's to bring the element of danger into it. But they're nowhere near the edge of the roof. So this helicopter, from McMahon Helicopter Services, no less. <laughs> they've 
also would have hired a crane to lift the trucks onto the mm. roof. The least of their expenses. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Uh, these custom trucks cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to make each. Good idea. The trucks are held together, so at least they won't physically damage the monster trucks. But isn't that the draw of a monster truck mm. that they they smash and the possibility of them? Oh, I, I don't honestly know. I'd have no interest in watching this. I actually have it written here. They're just going back and forth. Do Yanks fucking like this <laughs> shit? Also, where's Truckosaurus? <laughs> <laughs> that would have made this you crazy awesome. car. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mechanic lad, he says the wheels are six feet tall, I think. Again, that's not true. <laughs> it's like, so everyone who stands beside is eight feet tall, basically. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's a worked height for the wheels. It's <laughs> silly. It's amazing. Bad idea. It's painfully obvious that this match is a work. It's incredibly boring. Mm. The trucks help each other go back and forth and turn in unison. <laughs> this makes wrestling look like fucking UFC. Yeah. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It, it's like bad lucha yeah. with monster trucks. It's so bad. It is. It was <laughs> nothing good to say about this except for I am having the time of my life laughing at your program. Yeah. Like, also, the commentators fail to tell us how it works. I had to piece together what what's happening. The last thing they fade shots together, and the truck positions don't match. So you fucking taped it last night and you edited it down and that's what you're showing us. Yeah. So the whole thing's bollocks. Like, yeah. Is real monster trucks also a work? But Oh, do they have races? I think they might have like motocross oh, stuff. stuff. Like stuff, they yeah. might go over a little hill and oh, that's a seven pound nine for that hill. And then the next guy yeah. does it and it's like, oh, that's a nine point six. What's the difference? Yeah, yeah, it's an yeah. arbitrary yeah. number. Yeah. <laughs> After an awkward pause, Bischoff quips, This is exciting. <laughs> Big Show is said to have a professional advantage since Hogan is new to monster trucks. The crowd are silent. Giant forces Hogan out of the VLC circle and one pyro charge goes off. Oh, farty pyro. <laughs> <laughs> because the match hasn't lost them enough money already. Then Cunt Hogan forces Giant out and wins the match in an abysmal five minutes. Even in driving, Hulk Hogan can't job. <laughs> the match is over. The crowd cheer that. Giant confronts Brother Brother and the two battle on the ledge. Hogan hulks out of Giant Grips and <gasps> we get the greatest Incredible comedy pratfall. The Aloha <laughs> show. Aloha <laughs> show. <laughs> oh. Oh. No! No! Oh my god. No! Oh, oh no. Help. Help! No! And then, and then Hogan hamming it up as well. He's like, no, no! <laughs> giant falls off the roof of Cobo Hall presumably to a death uh, and after show falls off it's like someone up in the truck like cut to expensive helicopter shot now <laughs> everyone scream no this <laughs> <laughs> happened for like five minutes just no no <laughs> Hogan fucking Heenan Chivante no <laughs> Amazing. Yes! <laughs> yes. Uh, what do you think of this match, lads? <laughs> it's hilarious. It's one of a kind. <laughs> I'm glad I watched it. I'll never watch it again. But holy shit, I had a, lots of fun watching it. What did you think of this? I fucking... It was terrible. Yes. Oh, absolutely. It was use, but it was brilliant. Yes. I don't think it was fun at all. I think it was really boring. Oh, really? like, yeah, I just I, I quite like the bit where he fell off the building, but <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's yeah. so terrible. It's it's, it's, it's full so expensive circle again. It's full fucking circle shit. The commentators lament this death, and Heenan asks, 
Which side of the roof did he go off? The water side, the street side, or what? Well, the, you got a parking lot, you got a river. What difference does it make? Yeah. All right. All right. Landing on water or on concrete. Yeah. <laughs> Loads of fucking difference. <laughs> Bischoff listens on his headset. Hey, it's that excuse you ordered. And Shavante returns to call the rest of the pay-per-view. I feel the presence of Vader! Hello! Solomon! Vader has crossed over to another dimension! He has entered another plane! I am now Big Van Vader! Now and forever! And meet now in this one fall return match. Introducing first, from Chicago, weighing 268 pounds, the total package, Lex Luger! Match number eight, it's the Lexorcist, Lex Luger versus Macho Man, Randy Savage. From behind, Elvis lives, Crockett and RIP tombstones, Jim Crockett Sr. presumably, died in the 70s, it's Lex Luger! Two Luger matches! <laughs> Cut to a snap into a Slim Jim sign with someone wearing a tea towel like a kefir. Oh. You know? The Madness is wearing a blinding array of green, white, purple, and blue. <laughs> Steve! What bar is the Macho Man? Well, Jay, Magic Man is wearing quite a get-up today. Um, he is, in fact, back to wearing the same trunks that started it all off. What began what bar in the first place, with some added luminous tassels, of course. He is a bruiser bar. Oh, yeah. oh nice. Yeah. Survive mm. Series 91. Yeah. Nice. Why don't we take it to the fans? Yeah, so. I'm actually dying to see what these guys have for this. Macho Man. He is a Wonka nerds bar. Nice, I've never heard of them. We do get nerds yeah. over here, but we don't get that. A Wonka Laffy Taffy. Ooh. A Skittle Sour. Very good. A Chewitz Extreme Sour Apple Bar. Yeah. A Hubba Bubba Apple. Nice. Flavoured gum. Interesting. <laughs> A Now and Later Bar. Never heard of that. What the hell? A lion bar? The fuck wants that? <laughs> <laughs> and last, Macho Man is a 7 Eleven WCW Surge Cola Cup. Nice. Mm. Holy shit. This has the luminous green. Beautiful. Mm. Gotta recoup the monster truck cost. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Nash, what a cunt. <laughs> It is. It's true, yeah, I, I agree. Okay. Jimmy Hart immediately comes to ringside. The fans aren't paying attention and lightly boo the match with disapproval. The lads kill some time. Mouth gets up on the apron. Himself and Lex pretend to have knocked noggins. And that's enough for Macho to hit a lazy elbow drop and get the three in an afterthought 523. Macho gets up and leaves immediately. <laughs> Before, during, and after the bout, the commentators are preoccupied kayfabing Giant's situation. Shivani laments Giant's possible death by saying, But wow, it was a fantastic match, wasn't it? This is where Bobby just goes on and on and on. Like, you're insulting our intelligence. This is like modern news. Hours to tell us that there's no news. Yeah. Heenan starts getting annoyed with lack of updates and leaves for approximately five seconds. He gets on his knees, pleading to Shivani for information. That's just ridiculous. Why would Shivani have any more information than him? I'll tell you if you stop saying rough. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you we're going to get angry things saying, Oh, oh actually, rough is the good. <laughs> <laughs> they can be the third man. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Fade to Bruce Buffer earning part of his $350,000 wage packet, which would max out in 600000 in 98. Oh my god. Bruce Buffer introduces us to our main event. It looks like the perfect trap has been set. The uh, 
army of doom awaits you. <laughs> That's Time for your main event! It's WCW Champion Hulk Hogan versus The Giant! Or is it? <laughs> yes. A somber black clad Hogan enters with Jimmy Hart in tow. Hogan pleads his innocence and is interrupted by the Dungeon of Doom! It's Kevin Sullivan and The Giant! Shivani comments, He's risen from the dead! As Heenan exasperates, I don't understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fill you in, Bobby. <laughs> Kevin Sullivan was called by King Ikea to trek through the woods and was given powers, becoming the Taskmaster. After drinking from the Goblet of Darkness and imbued with the red and yellow, was tasked to bring doom upon Hulk Hogan. To do this, he'd need a dungeon of doom. A stable of highly gimmicked wrestlers. Fucking strap yourselves in. Crossing from the Valley of Madness is Ganondorf the Thief, Big Van Vader. The most vicious warrior from Tonga, given a golden spike for his sins, the Cannibal Mang. Given a golden spike for his sins? Deadly! <laughs> <laughs> a warrior that has slain the beasts on the stones of Mount Kilimanjaro, the Ugandan giant Kamala. And riding a tidal wave from the South China Sea to Waikiki, it's the shark, aka the Quake Muffin. Since when is he Chinese? <laughs> oh. The one that has betrayed darkness that has betrayed light from the land of yin and yang the zodiac he's from rant mcnally for the <laughs> <laughs> brutus beefcake ed leslie and then the crown jewel exploding through the cave's wall was the son of andre the giant kayfabe the one true immortal the giant big show paul white if it's kayfabe how did he get a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Got me there, Steve. <laughs> That's not all, though. Sherpa guides had dug out a 13 ton of ice. The 13 tons of ice contained the dungeon's insurance policy for the main event. Final intro before Halloween Havoc, we saw the Yate break out of the ice. <laughs> the Yate! They all come together to destroy the rare white Bengal tiger known as Hulk Hogan. Why? Because Hogan's demise is etched in stone! It be it's, it's a thing of beauty, isn't it? <laughs> this was all Kevin Sullivan, by the way. This, is, uh, this was his baby. The Dungeon of Doom, in general, was Hogan's concept. He wanted cartoony supervillains played by dudes I like to job to me. <laughs> Kevin Sullivan came up with the whole Dungeon of Doom. You can see Hogan's, he's wearing black mm. because darkness dwells in his own home. Perhaps he turned to the dark side. It's kind of growing inside him. He's got Taskmaster's eyebrow paint gimmick as well. Mm -hmm. Is it supposed to be some kind of, like, venom? Exactly, mm. yeah. The darkness that dwells mm. inside Hulkamania. Mm. Um, so this kind of dressing in black, shaving the handlebar <laughs> shtick, was WCW's toying with the idea of turning the Hulkster heel. Like, fair balls. Like, they went full out with it. Like, combined with not being on steroids, he's virtually unrecognisable from his yeah. WWF days. Yeah, completely different. It's weird, he's like in his NWO gear before he was in That's it, like, I, I, I take it this is the first time that he ever wore black and white, yeah? Well, yeah, this, this storyline, yeah. Great. 
So it's Hulk Hogan versus the Giant for Hulkster's WCW title. Giant is fully animated, goading Hogan. No selling his fall completely. Not even wet hair. Yeah. Mm. Well, he now they're done. A little bit of dirty face like uh, <laughs> Johnny B. Bad at the start. And here we go. Holy finger of fudge. Batman. <laughs> Trying to slam the giant. <laughs> Just oh go Gets it. Right up there, doesn't he? Oh my god. Like, he would be paying back Andre for his finger of fudge. Saturday night's main event. Uh, that was the main event uh, where he won the title. Oh, Jay Hunter special. We get a back rake by Big Show. Uh, giant is in amazing shape. Yeah, he looks great. So thin and sprightly. Sadly, he works over Hogan slowly. You get like an endless test of strength, loads of kicks, clubs to the back, that kind of thing. Yeah. Giant asks to do a suplex and Hogan says, fuck off, you've no idea how to do one. He doesn't get the arms correct. But he is amenable to a body slam. Oh, this is Giant's first WCW match and his second professional match ever. That's oh, fucking okay. impressive, man. It's not that bad. I mean, for your second ever match. It's, it's not bad event. at all. It's as good as Lex Luke. <laughs> <laughs> if you're wondering, his first was a countout loss to friendly Frank Finnegan in New Jersey's WWE. That is quite the leap, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Cheeky Ref gets himself over, climbing Brett's rope during a choke, and later the test of strength. I uh, you know. Uh, with his Hulk meter sufficiently full, Hulk runs wild. Well, he walks wild. Getting ten turnbuckle punches as the ref gets up on the rope to have a look-see. They use the eye rake transitioning between who's in control and endless bear hugs to break and have a chin wag. Hogan jumps for a lovely driving choke slam. That was really nice. Far superior than the one that show uses now. Yeah. Why doesn't he keep doing that? Knees? Knees are bollocks. Knees, yeah. yeah. Hogan gets his arms ready to kick out position immediately. What a cunt. Cunt Hogan. Uh, Hogan no-sells. Hulk up. It feels really played out when he's doing his Hulk up, uh, the no-selling shtick. The- I've been doing it for like 12 years at this point or something. It's just old hat, you know? Fans don't give a shit, really. Uh, well, actually, they do. They kind of mark out a bit. Shivante doesn't sell it very well. Like He's like, oh, how many thousands of times have we seen this? Oh, fucking cheers. <laughs> It's only been in, in your federation yeah. a year, like, you know? Finger point. Mark ref points as well. With, with the Nice! Big boot. Hot dog. And the show is stuck in his dizzy animation. He's <laughs> his finish him animation. Exactly. Yeah. Eye rake. Power slam a la Mania 3 with Andre. Leg drop and pin, but the ref is out. Was it Jimmy Hart? Couldn't be. Giant says fuck it and stops selling for a bit to see what's happening. <laughs> In plain view of the camera. And then, and then he has a look again. See, it was the second match ever. <laughs> ah. It would actually be fine that he was pretending to sell if he popped straight back up. But he doesn't. He continues to sell. Hart shows his allegiance by clocking Hogan with the belt, who no-sells, and is attacked by Giant and back into that fucking bear hug. Macho and Luger hit the ring. They run to Hogan's aid, but <gasps> Macho is hit by the belt. He sells it, unlike Hogan, and swerve. Luger puts the boots to Macho, all in time for... And the Yeti! Look at the size of that man! Luger! Look at Luger! Luger stopping Savage! I have been waiting on this for so I've never like you know I've seen clips yeah, yeah. but I've never watched this match love it it's a mummy that's it it's, it's a mummy didn't know Egypt had that much ice <laughs> <laughs> um, okay yes the yeti is a fucking mummy <laughs> Why was the Yeti a mummy? The original plan was to bring in Giant Gonzalez as the Yeti. Giant Gonzalez fucking muscle suit? Yes, yeah. Harry, that was yeah. their plan. Yeah. Him to Trump Big Show. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Why did, didn't he come? Partially due to visa issues. The plan was okay, so he's delayed and delayed, so we'll dress up this other lad as a mummy, so down the line we can unwrap him. As Giant Gonzalez. As the Yeti! Yeti! 
uh, banking on it, they actually touted the three giants for the three ring World War Three match next month. You know, giant Yate Gonzalez, but he never came, so they got Loch Ness. But he didn't come in time for that either. So, so fuck it. Hulk Hogan is the third job. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this company is amazing. Makes me want to read the death of CW all over again. Of course, the Yeti's appearance here is, is this the most memorable, permanent embarrassment in WCW history? Second. Shockmaster's worst. Mm. Shockmaster, yeah. yeah, yeah. But this is amazing. It's he it, tries to have intercourse with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking the dude main him, main event. Giving him a hug and a bit of a squeezy squeezy. <laughs> so obviously here at the Yeti that it was immediately scrapped and by the next month Ron Reese was repackaged as a scorpion for Mortal Kombat. Called Super Giant Ninja. That was his name? Yeah. And then he became a job guy as Big Ron Stud. That's a great name. And then simply Reese. <laughs> 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 so the Yate joins in this meat sandwich and bums Hogan. <laughs> Thoroughly hilarious. Was he not putting in the entirety of his pressure on the back of Show's neck? Yep. Uh, having completed his one spot, he steps off to the side and amuses himself holding up and waving his arms about <laughs> like a 1920s horror monster cliche. <laughs> torture rack to Hogan before the same fate befalls Macho. A double bumming and torture rack. <laughs> the second bumming literally only goes on for a second before a show is like, get the fuck off me! <laughs> The heels celebrate as Buffer fumbles out that Giant wins by DQ, but he's not the champion due to Hart's interference. Giant wins by DQ. Yeah. Jimmy Hart attacked the ref, which caused the DQ, but at the time, yeah. he would still be in Hogan's camp. So, Giant uh-huh. wins by DQ. Yes. Giant and Co. take the belt and leave as Hogan and Savage sell to see us out. No hot dogging. Shivante recaps the fallout we can expect on Nitro, and wow, end credits. Weird. Never seen him before. Mm. Uh, notably, Zane Breslov, awesome entertainment. He did the gates and stuff like that. Uh, producers Shivante and Keith Mitchell and SVP EP Eric Bischoff. Did you enjoy this match? It actually wasn't that bad. I kind of liked how, like, <laughs> the 1978 house show match. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, it, you know, it was simple. It was just a heel and a face battering each other. At the end, was crazy, but the match was okay. I'm not really watching it for the match. I'm watching it for the Yeti, and he did not disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. the match was got off. You know, lots of choking, lots of red holes, lots of eye rakes and stuff like that. Pretty much a three on ten, but then the Yeti hits and skyrockets to a ten. ten like. out of ten, Dave Meltzer. <laughs> So we score out of 10. Uh, it, I, I quite like seeing the big show in shape. I know he didn't do anything, but pretty much as soon as he joined WWE, he was overweight. Yeah. You know, there was nothing great going on there, but happy to see what he was doing. And the Yeti thing, seen it a million times, it's still great fun. It's magic, isn't it? Isn't it? It's, it's like the Yeti! Yeti! It's that call, lads. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. that call. Yeah. You it, can't even pronounce it right. It's Shivante's best call yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's take it to the aftermath. WCW Halloween Havoc, October 29, 1995. It did 145,000 buys, which is disappointing because last year's Halloween Havoc with Hogan Flair did 80,000 more than that. Hogan Invaders Trilogy earlier in the year did 70,000 more each. So, yeah. Why so shitty? Besides the obvious, WCW were in week 8 of the Monday Night Wars and had recently let go of Austin, Vader and Steamboat. Genius. (laughs) Genius. <laughs> Nitro and Raw were pretty much neck and neck. Raw winning 2.55 to 2.35, which is both terrible, by the way. But silver lining, it did 
boost house show attendances having Nitro. What do you think? I don't know what to say. Iconic. Memorable. I will never forget this. <laughs> In a weird way, really fucking enjoyed it. Much like most of this show. Every wrestling fan should see this show. It's a special. Um, yep, couldn't agree more. So yeah, obviously they lost a shit ton of cash on this immediately. This pay-per-view is the best of the worst. It's It's got everything. Terrible comedy gimmicks in the main event. Ridiculously expensive dead-on-arrival special attractions. The monster truck. Kayfabe shattering booking. The Aloha Paul. <laughs> and the Yate. In-ring was garbage. People say WCW sucked. And it did. But it was also awesome. Yeah. You know? Definition of swing so far below a zero that it's a ten. I'd be pulling my hair out if I was watching this back in 95. But looking back almost 20 years later... It's exactly what I want to see. Like, if wrestling pay-per-views are solely aimed on entertainment, it's a must-watch. The only thing better would be some kind of OSW review of the (laughs) 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 pay-per-view. Amazingly awful, incredible bollocks, a golden turd, 9 on 10. (laughs) Beautiful. Next night on Nitro, they retcon the outcome of Halloween Havoc. That Giants DQ win actually snags him the WCW world title. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck me. So Giant wins the WCW title without getting to celebrate winning the title. Mm. Fucking thanks, Hogan. Hogan is masterful at this shit, isn't he? My goodness. Jimmy Hart reveals he negotiated the Abyss special. Titles change hands by DQ, you see. The next week, due to these shenanigans, Giant is stripped of the belt, but like a Tuesday in Texas, the rain still stands, and they put up the belt at the 60-man World War III. Oh, Cunt Hogan. (laughs) We should check in with him. Something Hulkamaniacs, the darkness in the dungeon of doom shakes in fear just because Hulk Hogan is walking around with the power of the training, the prayers, and the vitamins. Everyone from Kevin Sullivan to the master to each and every creature that breathes the doom is afraid of Hulkamania because the training, the prayers, and the vitamins are immortal. They'll live forever. And now my brother of the road, the macho man, is on a mission. He's gonna bring us the head of Ming on a silver platter, the first man on the destruction hit list of Hulkamania. As you can see from the pay-per-view, a year into Hogan's WCW run, his babyface reaction wasn't great. WCW were confiscating anti-Hogan signs and giving out Hogan merch to those at ringside. He was also becoming really cunty backstage as he flexed his creative control card, booking Luger to join the Dungeon of Doom. He didn't want to, he wanted to join the Four Horsemen instead. And even changed the booking to next month's pay-per-view, World War Three, live in the ring as it happened. Yes. And with that, our Christmas special is at an end. Lads, what do you think of this show? Did you enjoy that? I, I loved it. I loved it. I couldn't call it anything other than a terrible show, but I absolutely loved it. Awesome. We will be back. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell me you, Steve. Uh, to what? WCW. <laughs> this era. Yeah, but we, like, you love World War III. Mm. It's, you're always showing me that pay- <laughs> fucking pay-per-view. Like... <laughs> So we're, we will be back at some point. Fucking love this show, man. It was great. Hogan's were hugged, yetis were mummies, and hundreds of thousands of dollars were lost along the way. <laughs> so before we sign out for the evening, let's hit the wrestling is... Uh. <laughs> segment. Awesome! 
I'm gonna deck your halls, bub. That'll do it for this week, folks. Episode 46 is in the books. In the pocket. Out of sight. <laughs> January brings us a new storyline arc. What will it be? special from 2001 it's the royal rumble no way out final nitro simulcast raw culminating with the greatest pay-per-view of all time wrestlemania x7 i need to beat you up i need it more than anything that you could ever imagine there can be only one world wrestling federation champion and that will be rock stone cold steve austin with all due respect Check out my Good one. That's a bit of a hefty fucking... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, from your boys at OSW, have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Crazy Kwanzaa, a Tip Tap Tip, and a Solemn and Dignified Ramadan. Until next time, it's Ho Ho C. Uh, oh, very good. Very and good. Christmas Tree One. Pick a boo. And myself, the 2014 Host of the Year Golden Nogger Award winner, <laughs> Jay Hunter. <laughs> Booked by Jay Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, a winner is you. Yeah, time! Yeah, time! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>